Good day, grade 11s. In grade 10, you learned that there were different types of chemical reactions. These reactions are synthesis reactions. This is where two reactants join to form a new product. Displacement reactions. This is where positive ions exchange their negative ions. And decomposition reactions, where a single compound breaks down into two substances. So, can redox reactions also be classified in these ways? Let us join Nelly as she shows us what happens when we place a piece of copper wire in some silver nitrate solution. Soaking a tree made with copper wire in a solution of silver nitrate for a few hours turns the branches silver and the solution blue. From these observations, you should deduce that copper from the copper wire has formed blue copper ions in the solution and the silver ions in the solution have formed the silver deposit that makes the sparkling tree. We can represent the chemical change as two half reactions. The first half reaction is copper reacts to form copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons. The second half reaction is silver plus 1 plus 1 electron reacting to form silver. Can you identify which half reaction is oxidation and which is reduction? Well, the copper lost two electrons and formed a copper ion. A loss of electrons is oxidation. The silver ion gained electrons, so this half reaction is reduction. Now let's add these two half reactions together. How many electrons were transferred? Copper lost two electrons, but the silver ion gained only one. This is quite confusing because, as we know, charge is always conserved. The number of electrons donated by the reducing agent must equal the number of electrons gained by the oxidizing agent. We need to balance the number of electrons transferred in this reaction by multiplying the reduction half reaction through by two. Now they are the same number of electrons on both sides of the reaction arrow. Let's do the next step, which is adding together the reactants and products. The overall redox reaction is copper plus two silver one plus react to form copper two plus plus two silver. This type of reaction is not just a redox reaction, but also a displacement reaction. Did you notice that the solution became blue? Nelly explained this when she said that the blue copper ions become part of the solution. We also noticed that the blue tree became sparkly and covered in silver. Since there has been an exchange of ions, we say that this is a displacement reaction. Now let us look at a redox reaction that is also a synthesis reaction. In this next experiment, magnesium reacts with the oxygen in the air to burn with a bright white light to form a new product called magnesium oxide. Let's go to the lab again. First, a piece of magnesium is torn from the ribbon. It needs to be sandpapered lightly to remove any dull coating that might have formed. Next, the piece of magnesium is wrapped around a combustion spoon and set alight over the flame of a Bunsen burner. Can you see the white powder product called magnesium oxide that forms during the reaction? We saw that two substances, the magnesium metal and the oxygen gas, reacted to form a white powder, magnesium oxide. Because these two substances combine to form one product, this is called a synthesis reaction. Let's see how the electrons in these atoms behave in the reaction. The magnesium reacts to form magnesium 2 plus ions. We can write this half reaction as magnesium gives off two electrons to form magnesium 2 plus ions. Since the magnesium loses electrons, this is the oxidation half reaction. Each of the oxygen atoms accepts two electrons to form oxygen 2 minus ions. Oxygen is a diatomic molecule, so we need to take this into account. So we can see that the molecule oxygen gains four electrons to become two oxygen, two minus ions. 
since oxygen gains electrons, this is the reduction half reaction. We can now balance these two half reactions to form our overall net ionic reaction. You can see that the two electrons are given off and four electrons are accepted. So we balance this. We need to multiply the first half reaction by two so that it has given away four electrons. Now that there are an equal amount of electrons given away and accepted, we can cancel these. We can then add the two half reactions to form the overall net ionic reaction. So magnesium and oxygen react to form magnesium 2 plus and oxygen 2 minus. The final redox reaction we will look at in this lesson is a decomposition reaction. Remember that this is when a single compound is broken up into two or more substances. Let us go to the lab to demonstrate one of these reactions. We will investigate what happens when we heat potassium chlorate in the presence of manganese dioxide. We place a small amount of potassium chlorate into the test tube. Add in some manganese dioxide to act as a catalyst. Now heat the test tube and its contents over the Bunsen burner. You will notice that there is a gas given off. We use a glowing splinter to check that the gas given off is oxygen. As you can see, the glowing splinter burns with a bright flame, which shows the presence of oxygen. Now let's look at the theory behind this reaction. Potassium chlorate decomposes to produce oxygen and potassium chloride. The balanced reaction can be written as two potassium chlorate molecules break up into two potassium chloride molecules plus three oxygen molecules. Can you assign the oxidation numbers to check that this is indeed a redox reaction? Let's see if your answers match mine. In the chloride molecule, the Cl has an oxidation number of plus 5, and in the chloride molecule, the Cl has an oxidation number of minus 1. The oxygen changes from minus 2 to 0. So we can see that there is definitely a change in the oxidation numbers, and therefore, this is a redox reaction. This is also a decomposition reaction since the compound potassium chlorate has broken down into two substances. Grade 11s, you will find more information about redox reactions at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Remember to try some of the questions in the task video too. Till then, goodbye.